we want you to like and subscribe as well so you'll never miss uh, a, a talking town or a, a talking knockout so we do another boxing show wherever it might be you'll get the notifications yeah. talking formula one all sorts of yes. shows and don't forget we are also partnered with match bingo play match bingo win cash prizes two pounds of bingo card and every time you play you do support the crucial work of the east anglian air ambulance which i'm sure we can all agree is an absolute crucial service is the east anglian air ambulance that's match bingo play match bingo win cash prizes over 18s only be gamble aware and of course the market osteopaths just to finish my 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 read as from earlier matt because you cut across me oh you sorry know, i mean yeah, you know, poor Freddie. Freddie. He'll be sat there. He'll be Freddie. working. He'll be working. Some some uh, patient listening to us, and he'll go, "Hang on, got at least save my phone number. It's oh one four four nine six one three six three three. Stone market ownership house. Don't live life in pain, Matt. Don't live life in pain. You don't live your life in pain. That's that, yeah. that's that's miserable. Get down that's, I know. I live it every single day. That's yeah. why I go see Freddie. Now. That's how I know it's a good service. Um, and um, I've got Shane coming around. Look at a, look at a bit of a building work for me. So you know, we promote stuff that we that I we. I've got experience with here, you know, except Manscaped. When I promoted Manscaped, I'll be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't use Manscaped. So um, <laughs> I couldn't tell you if it was any good or not. But they, they're all in the loft, the boxes, by the way. I know you and Rich, you and Rich, you do need one. Next time I see Rich, he can get, I'll give him his. And I know I need to get you your Manscaped box, but they are in the loft. They are in the loft. We might be, you said you were going to do a, a day in the life of Martin vlogging. At the uh, stay market. Whoa! I ain't vlogging. I ain't vlogging that. We ain't. We ain't doing the manscaped vlog. Not a chance. <laughs> YouTube would take us down, Matthew. <laughs> How outrageous! Yeah. How outrageous! Right. Um, <laughs> we've got four viewers. We can. We'll give them uh, wow. five minutes each, so they can have their say on their football club, and then we're going to wind it down. If you're listening on audio, it'll be a two-part. So that's part one. If you want to listen to it, Phil, Stephen, Frank, the legend, and of course the goat, Colin Plum. Uh, that'll be part two on your audio feed. For those on YouTube, sit right there. Sit right there. Because Phil Blundell, the ever optimistic Phil Blundell, is going to run us through what he <laughs> thought following yesterday. How are you doing, Phil? I'm feeling fine, mate. I'm a bit hoarse from uh, yesterday afternoon. Good. And the crazy, you know, the last two or three minutes of the game that ensued. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long all those fans in the way end were celebrating for, but I know the guy uh, sitting standing uh, behind me got up on the safe railing. Uh, uh, stanchion uh and just clung on for dear life as everyone was going absolutely <laughs> mental <laughs> everybody was losing it in that way limbs <laughs> that yeah, limbs limbs for sure yeah so yeah it was it was crazy but i mean say there it was there were seven added minutes of injury time at the end of the game and moors i think scored in the fifth minute so we yep. were celebrating for probably I don't know more than a minute, more than half that time, and uh, yeah. But um, look, I mean, say that goal that went in, you know, five minutes into injury time, felt like it felt like a win for me, and I'm sure everyone else probably felt the same. But I think to Southampton psychologically, that was that was a real blow, and it made me happy listening to what Russell Martin said on match of the day after the game that he was really angry with the defending. He said, you know, we shouldn't have let that happen. He's right. You well, know, smallest but... violin for you, Russell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and all, all, all the, all the town fans at the final whistle were chanting, it's happened again. It's happened again. <laughs> Southampton has happened again, which was, which was awesome. You know, just that feel good factor on these away days is absolutely, yeah. you know, wonderful to experience. Um, throughout this Premier League journey that we're going on this season. But, okay. uh, you know, in general, I thought Ipswich were good for at least a point yesterday. I think we created some some good chances in the first half, more so than Southampton. Perhaps really should have capitalised on, on one of those. Um, Are we toothless, about, Phil? Phil? No, no we're we not toothless. toothless. Look, look, I just want to clarify something. We're not toothless. I've, I've heard one or two people say the chat, that's rubbish, we're not toothless. We're not toothless, Matt. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really do apologise. We're not. Okay. not in my opinion. Yeah. It, it's just the fact that, look, we've been out of the Premier League for more than 20 years. We've we've just played our yeah, fifth game. We've played, I think, two of the... Well, I think with the, with, the, with the points that we've managed to win off teams, we want to point off 11th place Brighton last season. I think it's at 12th, 13th place Fulham last season. And I think many fans would expect is perhaps we should have beaten Southampton yesterday, but it's not given. You know, any away point in the Premier League is wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, and we should be happy with that. We should be content with that, and we are. Uh, yeah, but on this on this toothless uh, rotation thing up front, 
I just think, you know, it's going to take more time for us to bed in, more time for us to gel. I think it, for me yesterday, it was more of a Hurst type of game yesterday because I feel when okay. with Hurst, he kind of creates the space around him for us to create the chances to then score the goals. The lap is more of a ball at the feet, bullish, uh, strong running type of forward who who, li- who likes to be a bit self- bit more selfish with with his chances, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I just think I just think at, you know at times yesterday I think you know Amari playing on the right with Burns just it didn't click as well. I don't think, mm-hmm. and there may have been some times where they may have got in each other's way. Perhaps I don't know. I mean, but for me, I would I would play Schmodix in that ten role. I mean, say, so okay. you know, he does tend to go a little bit missing on that left side. It's, he's not really suited to it. Um, I think if if Clark had probably would have experienced a bit more Premier League football, that I think McKenna would would, would have been inclined to start him. Yeah, and but Phil, that's I, I like think... that's like job adverts that say, you know, we want a waiter with. 10 years experience on, on, on minimum wage. You know, you're not always going to get somebody who's available with 10, with 10 years experience. Yeah. You yeah, signed a player yeah, for, yeah. for big money. Um, he has had not, some, you knew that when you experience. signed him. So yeah. I, I can't, I can't buy into the, he's right. not getting sort of started because of the premier league experience. You knew that when you signed him, right? Yeah. I would say he's what I need to what? 23, 20, yeah. 23. So he's, he's still really young. Uh, I would say as far as the referee's performance yesterday was concerned um, with the Man City game, I thought he was weak. And yesterday it was even worse. It, it, we, so we're talking about a high bar for referees dishing out yellow cards this season. That's rubbish. It's more of a low bar <laughs> of handing out because there's been so many. What was it? Anthony Taylor dished out what? What was it? Sixteen yellow cards mm. the other week, and he'd it, it, been yeah dropped. I think for for this weekend. Uh, I think it was the fourth official hour it's game. Been rested. Was it, rested. Was, yeah, he's been rested. 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 Was it Stuart? Well. But yeah, but I mean, say he allowed a brawl to break out. And whenever a brawl breaks out, it usually means the referee's lost control of the game, which he did. I don't, Con- he was continuously blowing for fouls against town players. You know, when really, when you look at, you know, look at back some of those challenges, those Southampton players were going down like a sack of suds, you know. Okay. Really, it's really like, you're, you're, you are often critical of referees because they can do I, I, I can yourself. be, but, but yesterday he, he was. All right. One more minute, Phil, before I let you go and bring in Stephen. What what else do you want to bring to the to the tables? I know you've always got one more thing. Well, I, I'm not sure what my one more thing is, but all right, don't have one. Then. <laughs> I'm gonna say, look, I think I think yesterday I probably would have started with Hurst up top, Clark on the left hand side, and Ogbeni on the right hand side, and okay. played Omari to start with in that ten roll behind Hurst. Mm-hmm. And then I would have made the change, I don't know, 20 odd minutes before time, bringing on Schmodix and the lap is what I would have done. All right. There you yeah. go. Phil, appreciate you coming on as always. You have a, enjoy the rest of your Sunday afternoon. Yes, Stephen was on the match reaction show. He's got a few more points he wants to make. Steve, what are these points? What have you thought about in the last 24 hours? Well, first off, I, I watched the match again this morning. Yeah. And I didn't see the Axel Twins there being mistake for the first goal, which Lee pointed out yesterday. So it looks like it was a bit of a shot. Bad, wasn't it? <clears throat> uh, but mainly it's like, you know, it works both sides with overestimating teams. Yeah. You know, we started off a lot saying a lot of fans were saying we should be beating this, this, this uh, Southampton and things like that. Well, maybe Brighton thought that about us. They should have beaten them. Well, they will do. Every team will. But the point is that w- that will work in our favour more than it works against us because more, more teams will be expected to beat us than we'll be expecting to beat them. So it works both ways. You know what I mean? You can't be all disappointed when we didn't beat a side but some people said we're expected to win, and let's be fair, nobody, nobody deserved to win. You know, it was two sides, very bland. I still say, you know, their keeper was busier than our keeper, you know. Yep. I think we had six on target to their three. So the, the, re, the reason I actually hit the post is because our keeper forced him wide, and there was a defender coming in, forcing him right. So they were doing the jobs, you know. Yeah, and, and he got through, yeah, but they were making sure we weren't getting a clear shot. You know, and there was one following in behind to try and clear it off the line. So they did everything they can to stop that. You know, it shouldn't have happened in the first place. But when it does, I want people to do everything they can to stop it. That's the first point. And as regards Matt saying, you know, who will we get in January? You know, no one's going to want to. Well, we can get a loan for six months. They don't mind about, you know, they don't mind whether you, whether your team's struggling down, down there or not. You know, you could be a little bit more 
reserved about how much you pay it like we did with more last season. We can afford to pay him a bit extra because he's not going to be here next season. Is that an ideal scenario? Would you prefer someone to be here next season? Of course you would. But the top of is you might not be able to get those people and, then, and you might not be able to get someone coming for six months who will do who have that quality. So I think that's probably a route we'll probably go down. Maybe look at someone who's not playing in the Premier League. You know, like at the end of the day, oh, everybody wanted that great guy. He never went anywhere. So he was obviously a very difficult person to sign. You know, yeah. and then everybody seems to want Brozier. Well, he's injured till October, November, not October, November. So he wasn't the solution for yesterday. You know, I don't know. I don't know what it is because there's players that would try to get like laugh. They weren't for selling. We can only buy when we can when the, when someone wants to sell. You yeah, know, so yeah. we did go for people. The deals just weren't being done, and I didn't want mm. us to go out and just sign anyone. You know, because that wouldn't have worked either. You know, I think. Delap is a good player and he is he's, he's functional. And I think Delap and Hurst are two different types of strikers. And that's where I think the number 10 situation comes into play. I think I get the reason why Smodic is out on the left at the moment, because Broadhead was out and he's not back yet. You know, now Broadhead's training and he might be back. I think you can probably see more of a Clark Broadhead left. Because it was very imp- it was very interesting to see when I know Clark didn't do a lot, but if you notice. The only decent crossfield ball from the left that came in was Hurst Seder. And that header eventually led to goal. And that was just one moment. That's all he needed was one moment to put a ball. Smodic didn't do that the whole game. Mm. And that's what he needed off left. Simple fact is, Davis isn't going to do what he did last season. He cannot. Last season was fine because Davis was getting down, getting the. He's got to spend more time defending. He's not, you know, like against Brighton, he had a winger he had to control. He couldn't be a winger. And that's where you need someone on the left who can come inside, but can also create a bit. And that's what Clark can do. He'll cut inside and have a shot, but he can go down the line. That's why I don't think Amari should be on the right. Yeah, because he's great at cutting inside, but he's not very good at going down the line. And oh, he can do it though. He can, he can do it though. Steve. Not seen good, him do though. It. But do you want someone who's who's average at it, or do you want someone who's good at it? At the top and bottom of it is Amari played most of his time out there anyway. He drifted out to the right. His shot came from the right. He was he was about five yards away from Burns most of the game. You know what I mean? So he doesn't... We're being too rigid and he's in the number 10, he's going to stay there. He doesn't do that. He floats around. You know, you so... Can, you, I hear you, but I'll flip it to you, Steve. I'll flip it to you, Steve. Amari has that X factor, right? We all we all, yeah. we all know that. We all see it. We all can agree on it. Amari has that yeah. X factor. Where, where, where are the spaces to, to allow him to get that X factor? Is it centrally where there's more bodies or is it on the right, where there's perhaps a one-on-one or there's a two v one, there's well, less yeah. bodies. Where where's the opportunity for the X factor sort of better? Is it central That's or when on the right? Come down to player intelligence. The player on, on on the field at that moment in time uses intelligence to look for the space, and he was looking for the space. And he, mm, he got yeah, the ball. Yeah. I think my only my only issue with her, with with him yesterday was he was holding on to the ball too long. Yeah, mm. it wasn't releasing the ball quick enough. You know, he was trying to take an extra two or three touches or go an extra two yards, yeah. and he was getting closed down. That was my only issue with him, not where he played. You know, if he was playing fine there, and then he drifts out to the right and gets a great shot in. You know, that's what he was doing a lot last season. You know, but with someone on the right going down the line, yeah, it allows him to float around. You know, if he's stuck there out there, who else, you know, like I said, all we'd have then is three right wingers and one, one number 10. You know what I mean? At the moment, we've got Broadhead and Clark as left wingers. We've got Omari and Hutchinson as number tens, who can both play it. And you've got Unc Benny and Burns as right wingers, both fun- all functional in them positions. Yeah. And all I'm saying is, the left wingers will come inside, but they'll also put put balls in. The right wingers can come inside, but they'll also put ball with b- balls in. And I do think it depends which striker plays with the number ten. I think Smodic will play better with Hurst. Than he does with the lap because Hurst plays knockdowns and Hutchinson is not as good as not with knockdowns as what Smodic would be. Where Delap likes it to his feet, and Smodic isn't very good at passing to feet. He would rather, you know, his passing was it can be a bit wayward. Where Hutchinson can come up with some very cute little passes. So I think it does also depend, it's not necessarily who players were, it's who they play with. And I do think Hurst probably pairs better with Smodic. And Dilap probably plays better with Hutchinson. That's just my opinion, anyway. 
Hey, that's, that's, that's all we ask for, Steve. It's all we ask for anybody to come on and have their say in their own words. You've done that. Steve, we appreciate you, my man. You look after yourself. Great comments Thank as you. always. Okay, Harp says, the lap, the lap tries to turn and get going when he receives the ball, rarely comes off. Hurst will hold it up and bring it in. Neil Fay, before I've been calling in to sort of discuss Greaves, says, um, this is Neil Fay's comment, where's our scouting network? Is there no one out there like a Royce or a Selena? Well, that kind of sort of flair cult hero style. Or style. continental. I, I think you're seeing the emergence of that, though, aren't you? That continental sort of... Well, Samari, uh, is it not? That's the, That's... We bought Amari. I mean, he 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 brings those kind of attributes, you know. Head no, but I down, think you just sound fans have always conditions. loved the gems from the continent. You know, your, your Fabian Vilnius's, your Gus Ullenbeek's, your your Royces, your Selinas. You know, the players that aren't necessarily you know known within the country. I mean, Selina obviously was that you bring in that are unknown quantities. That's sort of, you know, oh wow, this is a really great well, player. Um, you're seeing that, aren't you? Maybe you maybe, maybe well, Kahoost. Yeah, that? so that's, that's where I was going with it. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're seeing the emergence of that, aren't you? That that move away from the the homegrown sort of bias, mm. if you like. Yeah, I mean, um, let's I mean, let's see what January brings when the window reopens again. It's interesting. Steve made a point there about loans. It's the, the interesting dynamic there, isn't it? Because I I'm in my mind thinking we will buy somebody that is performing quite well at whatever level at the moment to come in and help spearhead this survival campaign. Mm. Now, last season, you saw someone drop down from the Premier League into the Championship to help us, which was key for more. Key for more. Right. So, but it's a different dynamic then to try and get someone off a Premier League bench who's not playing games to then hit the I ground. I think you're going to be a loan person. Try, with a, yeah, with try a and get to us, buy. Yeah, I, I, that doesn't sit comfortable with me that someone's just not playing games uh, in a top flight division, be it the Premier League, Italy, France, wherever, is then tasked with hitting the ground running to try and keep us in a division. But then, excuse me, didn't didn't Burnley sign Veghorst in the January window when they were struggling in the bottom three? Uh, I can't I'm sure they did. And then they went, I think they even went down that year. Don't know. I'd have to... I'd, I'd but have but to it, it, what I'm saying is it, it has happened. It can happen. It does happen. Um, He'd actually know. been a good signing for us, I think. He had quite yeah. good Euros, I thought. And he was still yeah. at Burnley, wasn't he? Um, I, get, I just think you've got a good player's chance. Nice, you've got, I think. You, 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 you can be concerned about the ability to put the ball in the net but equally you can also say we're it's, it's the season's in its infancy you have to sort of pull back the judgment pull back the the knee jerk and say you know these guys have got to get at least another month month and a half under their belts before you start saying oh you know we're we are that striker short okay, no i know mckenna felt it because they were after the even right to 11 o'clock on the, clock on the, on the deadline. After an I think in my own head, when I look at the season, I mean, I'm thinking, I, I've always thought to myself, probably we can have a good second half of the season. Like you say, you've brought in lots of players for lots of money. Uh, the dynamic of the side has changed slightly in terms of what went from League One to the Championship and into, in, into the Premier League. So I do feel like we probably can have a, a good second half of the season, but you, you don't want to be, you don't want to be adrift from anywhere. Do you know what I mean? That's, no. For example, yesterday, if we'd won, we'd have been probably sitting in mid-table. Then suddenly you've got a four points barrier between us and the bottom three. As it stands, you know, we're, we're, we're 17th in the division at the moment. I was just looking up while Phil was chatting, because they mentioned this to me on the Anfield wrap, that they one of the things they said and that we must improve on is our chance creation, of which we sit bottom at the moment with just 29, when even Southampton are in 40-something. So if you're not creating chances, you've got to be then clinical when you do get them, when they do come along and we're not, mm. we're not seeing that, but then let's go, but you know, that's a bit of a negative, but the positive of that is like you said earlier, you take Man City and Liverpool games out of the equation. You've played against three, you know, uh, sides that aren't in Europe and um, we, we, we're undefeated against them, but we, some, something's got to break in it. We need to see more chances and we need to start scoring goals up because we ain't going to win the games, but. Let's see what happens with Villa. I mean, Villa's going to be... I mean, look, you said earlier, people might be looking at Ipswich you now, like Villa, and thinking that's actually a good run for us when we play Bayern Munich a few days, a few days later. But I'm hoping they're distracted, personally. I've been saying that for the last three weeks. It'll be a tough, it'll, it'll, it'll be a tough game for them, I'm pretty certain. And, you know, while, while I thought that we looked a little bit kind of like a relegation side yesterday, we certainly didn't against Fulham, did we? As we said, we didn't look like imposters against a side that traditionally finishes in that mid-table, which is kind of like the dream finish for us at the moment as we sit yeah. here today. So we, we certainly didn't there. So hopefully we can bring that with the 12th man that the, the Portman Road crowd bring. Um, hopefully we can bring that against Villa next week and see what happens. 
Yeah, absolutely. All right, bring Colin in. We've got two more viewers who want to have their say. Colin, before I, I sort of ask you about your thoughts about yesterday, talk to me about Greaves because you've been saying in our chat it will go to the next World Cup. What do you mean that? Do you, do you think so? Yes, I <clears throat> yes I do. I I, I think he's um, he's one of the best central defenders I think this club has had in a long long time. Um, a good a good maybe ten years. Um, he's the best central defender we've had. He's he always plays to me, you know, like a bit of a Rolls Royce. Really, he's, um, he seems to be, you know, very easy on the eye. You know, very good at in possession and out. You know, he seems to read the game absolutely fantastically. Um, you know, I'd arguably say he's one of the, one of the best central defenders that this club's had for. A, a long, long, long time, and uh, and I just think he'll be. I think he'll be as long as we obviously, if and when we stay up, which I'm sure we will do. Um, I think he'll be the next Ipswich captain. That's just my opinion. I think he'll be the next Ipswich captain. He looks like a leader to me. Um, and he just looks so assured, you know. He and like I say, he reads the game so well, and um. Just think it'll be. I just think he'd be an excellent um, future captain for the club. You know. And you um, started our show off, Colin, in the chat by saying away points are absolutely vital in the Premier League. I said during the week I'd take a point, and if we won, brilliant. It's life. We move on to Villa. So an away point, you say it's absolutely vital. How did you see yesterday, and what are your thoughts today in regards to that? Well, obviously, you know, it, you know, it goes without saying, Martin, that uh, and Matt, um, you know. Like everybody said today, especially Phil, who was there, I saw him, saw him yesterday. Good old Phil. Um, you know, it it was it was it was obviously in the back of my mind, maybe with five minutes to go or whatever that you know maybe it was slipping away from us. But like we always say, and and it's proved nearly every week that this team never ever gives up. We have to have it in the back of our heads at all time. And I think sometimes some of these clubs, you know, just forget that maybe a tad that, you know, this is a club that, you know, just doesn't know when to give in. And and Phil was absolutely right. I mean, the scenes in that end, you had to be in there. We obviously got views at Barnsley and, and Matt's been at games where, you know, it's kind of, Kicked off in all the right ways, you know. Um, but, you know, you're hugging people you've never met and you're hugging people that you have met. And it was just balmy. And 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 to be perfectly honest with you, you know, like everybody said, it was like it was like a win. But um, I've, got, I've got to say, you know, obviously we were singing that song about, you know, it's happened again to the Southampton fans. But that is the very... We all know what it's like when we've been at Portman Road near away team scores yeah. very, very, very late. And that's bad enough in itself, Martin. But when you get, as you're filing out, and, and trust me, there was a fire drill going on. Um, and, and as the fire drill's going on, Martin and Matt, and um, you're getting, like, it's happening again in your ears as you're going through the exits. That is the last thing you need before you get in your car, Martin, isn't it? Um, mm. but yeah, it was, it was fantastic. And, 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 and I must admit, I don't think it's been kind of said, <clears throat> I, I honestly believe, I mean, we started really well and I, and I believe, I think if we'd have scored, you know, if, if Santa pots and pans, as my dad used to say, but, um, if we'd have scored in that first 20 minutes, um, I, I do think it would have been a, like a 1-0, 2-0, quite an enjoyable, easy-ish day. Um, but you've got you've got a hand at Adam Lalana. I was a bit surprised he started, to be honest, but you can see why he started. Obviously, he's, he's obviously technically a very good player. I mean, the ball he played around the corner was what's first class. As an English international footballer, you know, doing uh, applying his trade. As he does, you know, and and and, and it was a it was a defence split and pass, and and I must admit that that young lad, I um, can't think of his name offhand. Tyler Dibbling. Tyler Dibbling. Yeah, uh, he 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 is a very very cultured player. I think he'll go very very 
far in the game. I, I wouldn't be surprised in five, six years' time, place for England. He's a very, very good footballer. And I, and I don't think he'll be at Southampton very long, to be perfectly honest. I think maybe he'll be he'll be left St Mary's, I reckon, in the next yeah, maybe year, 18, 18 months. Just 18 years of age. You know, he, he, looked, he looked every part of the player, didn't he? Um, he really did. He really did. Anything else, Colin, before I, I bring Frank in, do you want to say about yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just thought, I just like to say, <clears throat> I just like to say, you know, for the people who are fearing, like for next Sunday, you know, don't 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 be doing that. You know, let's take it as a, maybe like a cup tie. Um, go into it. The the cameras, the live cameras are there, and and I, and that gives it, I think that little bit extra um, for the town players, um, maybe especially and and. Um, you know, if we if we come out of that game again with another another draw, um, you know, like I said before, a point a point is precious. If we get three points, that'd be absolutely fantastic. But uh, you know, I, I, we we should go into the game with confidence. We had three games unbeaten there, Matt. Like Matt quite rightly says, and uh, we've got nothing nothing to fear. We're 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 there. We're there. You know, by right, and we should always remember that. And um, you know, I think I think we owe Aston Villa one. You know, because uh, I'll I'll never forgive him for for um for for uh, Pittman us to that eighty one title. But I would like to say this, Gov, and it gives me the perfect um, opportunity. Please, Gov, you know me. I know me Go football. For Go for it. Anybody from Aston Villa watching this? And I watched him several times. He was a young lad in eighty one. Gary Shaw, rest in peace. Brilliant footballer. He was a brilliant footballer. I remember him playing up front with Peter With, and yeah, to all his family and friends, um, rest in peace. He was a, he was a great player. Absolutely. Well said, Colin. Well said. Well said. I remember Gary Shaw. Big shock of blonde hair, didn't he? Yeah. Colin. Yeah. Remember him yeah. well. Yeah, and they and they done, and they done a lovely tribute to him at Villa Park yesterday, Villa Park yesterday which was which was uh, fantastic for the lad and, and his uh, obviously and his family fantastic. So right. yeah, uh, yeah echo, echo those thoughts, Colin. Well, well said. Um, appreciate you coming on. Look after yourself. All right, and um, yeah, all the best. All right, thanks for for, for appearing. Um, Harp says uh, dibbling by far the best player on the pitch, which I I, I would agree with. Very good James mm -hmm. says he's loving the show. Harp says he's loving the show. Oh no, he says Gary Shaw. Sorry. Yep. Um, it was a real. That was nice words from Colin, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean that was a great team. That that Villa side of Peter Weir, and it beats Bayern Munich in uh eight, in the eighty one European Cup final. You know, pipped us to the title. <laughs> that was always Bobby's biggest regret. We didn't win that league title that year and they pipped us to it, despite us, I think, beating them home and away. Um, so, yeah, great words from Colleen. Yeah, and Gary Shaw is one of those players. I can remember, you know, football sticker album, 81, 82. Like I say, he had a uh, blonde, big shock of blonde hair. And, uh, yeah, very sad that he's passed so early. All right, well, we'll finish up with Frank. Welcome in, Frank. Um, how you Hi, doing? What, what are your thoughts on yesterday's... Yesterday's one point away at St Mary's. Yeah, well, I missed. Us. I was struggling to get. Um, I, I was struggling to see the game, so I missed the first few minutes of it. But um, that was probably the best phase, apart from the end bit that Ipswich had. And uh, maybe there's a song in uh, "Dibbling's Good at Dribbling" because he was very good and scored a very early goal. Um, but I, I thought um, I thought Town didn't play uh, too badly. In fact, probably. When I watch it on match of the day and the the half chances we had, and they were mainly half chances. Smodix missed uh, one, which I thought he might have done better with. Barney Hutchinson had a great shot that was tipped over. Uh, Ramsdale, I don't rate that highly as a as a keeper. I think he's always got a mistake waiting to happen there, and we didn't get the opportunity uh, too much to exploit it. But all things considered, it is a point. It's three games undefeated now. We go into the game against Villa next week. Rejuvenated, I think, in the knowledge that we are picking up points. I mean, yeah, it's it's away from home. And if you look at the teams that we've lost to it at, at uh, Portman Road, Liverpool 0-2, in which in the first half we were neck and neck with them, and then mm. Fulham, and Fulham are ninth in the table now on eight points. So 
You know, our home record is not to, as bad as it may seem, and we could easily have got three points against Fulham. I think we'd all agree to that. I was there, as you know, and uh, I really thought we'd we'd get over the line. It was, it was, a, it was a near thing, near miss, so to speak. Yeah, um, the lap yesterday. Obviously, I'm a big fan of the lap. You've 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 spoken about the lap previously. How did you see his performance? Well, it, it was the usual in the sense, full of energy, full of endeavour, full of, full of physicality, um, but. I think, uh, who was it, Phil, I think, alluded to the fact that in this sort of scenario where we need to find goals, we can't rely on him with a thunderbolt from distance every game. And you have to look at who uh, might replace him. The obvious choice, of course, is uh, George Hurst, but he's just coming back from uh, uh, to full fitness. But if I was if I was the manager, which obviously I'm not, <laughs> I would uh, I would uh, pick uh, George Hurst and have the lap on the bench next week against uh, Villa. Because the thing about Hurst is, He's a team player. He doesn't get an awful lot of goals either, but he, 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 the team understand him and he understands the team and how they play. The lap is still learning that art, so that will take time. I know you love him, <laughs> Guff, but uh, in all honesty, I think he's still got a long way to go and he's still serving his apprenticeship. And before I wrap things up, I've got a poem for you. Can I uh, do it? Excellent. I'll, yes, turn please. It into, yeah. I'll turn it into, into a little song because it may be a bit quicker that way. I was going to call it Sam's Heavenly Strike, but I think Sam's Saintly Strike, strike is a better, uh, a better title. We huffed and puffed throughout the game without too much conviction. We kept knocking on the South Hampton door like some crazy drug addiction. We had the most possession at 46.4 and had more shots on target of this we can't ignore. But going down a goal so quick made our challenge more extreme. As we battled to get back on terms, we were running out of steam. But who popped up but Sammy with that strike on 95? Captain Moore's is fantastic, and he kept our dreams alive. To use that football cliche, if you don't shoot, you don't score. But Sam the man had his own plan to slam the Saints right on the floor. <laughs> well well done, done. You was, that was reminiscent of Johnny Cash, some of them lower tones you were using there. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. I wasn't too Very sure. Good. I just wanted oh, yeah. to speed it up because sometimes the poem's a bit boring and we turn it into a little song. Brilliant. Frank, Thanks. you can expect to see that across right. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook Reels. <laughs> and we'll yeah. Keep bring that up. That's great. Fantastic. fantastic. As always, it's just a pleasure talking to you and I hope you're well. Um, yeah, uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And thank, thank you. you so much for coming on the show. We honestly always appreciate it. It's always a pleasure, my friend. Thanks. Look after yourself. All the, best. All the best. Nice to see you, Frank. So we've Brilliant. got um, Ancient Tractor Boy. Um, it says, we've only played two games on any level of possession. It would take more time for the new five or six outfield players who are starting to click. Um, uh, Ancient Tractor Boy also says, three out of our five games have been at Rook, uh, Rook, at Rook's Drift. Is that right, Matt? Am I reading that right? Rook's Drift was, was the famous uh, Zulu film. Michael Caine's at it. Rook's Drift. They're under siege. Oh, okay. Yeah. He has no what he means. Yeah. Never seen it. Bats number fire. Great for our defensive development. Position will improve as the new players integrate. Season starts in November. Um, I haven't, I've never seen that. I've never, never seen Zulu. It's good. Michael Caine. Young Michael Caine. Plays never Bromhead. Yeah. Way before Very... my time. Way before my time. It's a good film. Uh, it's really good. Space Jazz more my thing. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a kind of different genre to that one, I'd say. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's how you know, young I am in the sense of that's the, <laughs> yeah. probably one of the first ones I can remember. Yeah. Um, but no, it's been a fantastic show. I love hearing, you know, from, from people when they click the link. And because I love what I love about this, about, about what we do here, Matt, and I'm going to blow my own trumpet a little bit, but what I love about it is that you give people the chance to have their opinion and really go behind it. Like, you don't always agree with it. And you got a bit of that on the match reaction show yesterday, like mm -hmm. sort of uh, mm -hmm. Frank there, for example, you know, not being a, a huge fan of, of the lap, whereas I am. But I love the fact people want to come and put their their name, their face, their whole being to that opinion. So that's, that's what I love about it. Like if you're going you're gonna, to say something, you know, don't type it on behind a, a screen. Actually own that opinion. Own the, right? own the opinion. Yeah, absolutely. And it's all down to the one common goal is to see if you stay in the Premier yeah. League for next season. That's what we all want to see. That's what yeah. we're all shooting for. And if I was right and Frank was wrong, or if you were right and I was wrong, I wouldn't be sat here doing a podcast. I'd be sat in a dugout next to McKenna. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. We're just fans basically like in the pub talking about football. Um, yeah, absolutely. But I've really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed really it. Bears play this evening. Hopefully they don't, they don't ruin my... I saw a great, great meme yesterday. You know, The Simpsons. 
got Homer and Bart, and and and, and it's the caption. Nobody ruins my weekend. And then in the next the next slide says maybe except the boy. And then the face of the boy isn't Bart. It's like the Bears logo. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's so true. That's so true. Are they playing um, tonight? Who have they got tonight? The Indianapolis Colts. Oh, okay. Six p. Good luck with that one, then. Good luck. Yeah. So looking forward to it. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thank you for being with me. All thanks right. for, thanks for your thoughts. Thanks for your thoughts at home. Um, join us again on Wednesday for our match preview show as we build up to Aston Villa at home, live on Sky. But until then, like, comment, join us on Discord. If you're not yet a member on YouTube, hit the join, 499, cancel any point, and then you can come over and have a great conversation about ITC on Discord. More perks are coming, by the way, for our members. There's a little teaser for you. Whether you're a new member or an existing member, a few more perks are heading your way. Way. 